Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I came to bless his holy name. Did anybody step into this place to do battle with the enemy that has been waging war against your life? This means war. Let me try one more time. I think a few of you just caught on. This means war. This means war. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. That means every trick and every trap, every dart, every demonic vice that he has launched against your life cannot, will not, shall not prevail because God is exalted. Just for a few seconds, I need you to honor God by giving him the praise that he deserves. Not the one that you feel like. Not the one that looks like what you've been through. But praise ye the Lord. Come on, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Bless him, lift him, extol him, laud him, magnify him, give him the glory. Come on, don't worry about your neighbor. Don't wait for them to catch on. It's about you and God. This is a moment between you and your Savior, the one that kept you, the one that shielded you, the one that protected you, the one that forgave you, the one that redeemed you, the one that restored you, the one that reconciled you, the one that brought you, the one that keeps you, the one that sustains you, the one that covers you, the one who never leaves you, the one who always has your back. This is between you and the one who has been there from the beginning until now oh bless his name in this place for a few seconds I know this is gonna be a little different but we got to shift the atmosphere I just want to see if I got any warriors in the house and because God he is the greatest power and we shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be no weapon for against me shall prosper oh no it won't come on you know what no turn this into a war room come on the enemy has wreaked havoc on the people of God for far too long the violent take it by force 
There has to be some intercession. There has to be some warring in heavenly places. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not tangible. They're not physical, but they are spiritual. They are mighty for the pulling down and the destruction of strongholds. Everything that has wreaked havoc on our families, on our finances, on our faith, on our focus, on our minds, on our hearts, on our children, on our communities, on our blocks, on our neighborhoods, we declare war before before the United States has the ability to go into a war they have to get it sanctioned and approved by the legislative go governing body in the United States and they have to issue what is called a declaration of war before they can go into war they have to first officially and formally declare war well here's it here's the declaration I've already signed it. God, by the investment of his authority in the office of pastor and senior shepherd of this church, duly elected, appointed, assigned, anointed, or ordained, I approve, I, re I, I approve, I, I release you into the next wave of this effort. And now it's up to you. I can only give you approval. It is you in your position, in your posture, in your post that has to issue the declaration well you serve the enemy notice that I will not be defeated I will not lay down I will not bow down I will not give up I will not roll out be pushed out but I will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water and the way that you issue that decree is through the measure and magnitude of your praise tell the devil he lost we won tell him he is defeated we have the victory. Tell them he is in the back. We have been called to the front. Open your mouth and bless. Bless the name of God. Or magnify him with me. Or bless his name. Or taste and see that he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. This praise ain't even about you. This praise is for my children. This praise is for my children's children. This praise is for my health. This praise is for my peace back. This praise is about my joy back. I declare war. Satan, you are defeated. I Come on for a few minutes, intercede for your house. Talk to God on behalf of your family. Come on, you know what you're in need of. Talk to him, talk to him out loud. Don't let it get quiet in here. The enemy loves for us to be silent in the sanctuary. But I need you to continue to make a joyful noise. But talk to God, talk to him, talk to him. Everything, come on, I dare you to start decreeing and declaring what you have not seen in the natural. Come on, it's already done in the spirit. You're going to pull it down into your first physical circumstance. We are expecting the manifestation of God's favor in ways that are so mighty mind-blowing it will discombobulate and confuse the enemy we expect another level of increase and praise to come into our household and our heart our head and our hands will be aligned and affixed with the truths that God has already decreed declared and spoken into existence we know that when God issues a word it cannot return void and he promised that we are the head and not the tail that we are above and not beneath beloved he he says above all my desires that you prosper and be in good health sickness will not take you out you shall live and not die say the Lord you will not look like this tomorrow you will not look like this next week you will not be in this position next year God is about to do a new thing behold all things have become new I, I, I bind the enemy in the name of Jesus say to the Lord rebuke you you have no more authority. Your lying tongue shall be silenced. Every dart that you launch against the people of God, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. Cancer, you got to go. Sickle cell, you must leave. High blood pressure, you're going to have to regulate. I 
call every cell, every tissue, every molecule, every organ in your body into alignment with God's truth, which declares he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of my peace is upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We will be healed from depression. We will be healed from anxiety. We will be healed from confusion. Satan, you lose and we win. We don't have to walk as those who think we can because we know he did and because he did, we will. And because he did, we will. And because he did, we will. And because he did, I can. And because he did, I shall. And because he did, it is so. Satan, you are defeated. blood of Jesus over every window sill, every doorknob, every handle in your household. I plead the life-giving, I plead the life-giving, altering blood of Jesus over your mind. I plead the blood of Jesus over your dreams, over your heart's desires. I plead the blood of Jesus over your future. I plead the blood of Jesus over your finance. I plead the blood of Jesus over your children's children. I plead the blood of Jesus over your dreams, your hopes that have been locked up in your heart. I plead the blood, 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 the blood. Thank you for the blood, God, which seals us. Thank you for the blood which saves us. Thank you for the blood that forgives us. Thank you for the blood that washes us. Thank you for the blood that cleanses us. Thank you for the blood that gives us might. Thank you for the blood that gives us strength. Thank you for the blood that gives us power. Thank you for the blood that gives us life. Thank you for the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Say that you are defeated. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Power in the blood. Power in the blood. Oh, bless your name, God. And because we know who we are and whose we are, I don't have to see it to see it, but I'm looking at you and you look better in the future than you look today. The devil is already defeated. I just need about a thousand triumphant people watching me around the world to open up your big mouth, tear up your living room if you have to, move some chairs if you need to, but I need a victory shout in this place. I need a triumphant praise. I need to see some people who know who your God is. high five and tell them I got you covered don't worry I got your back you pray for me I'll pray for you you praise a little I'm gonna praise a little you shout a little I'll shout a little you dance a little while I'm gonna dance a little while I ain't gonna leave you out here by yourself you're not gonna be the only one in this fight I will fight for you like I'm fighting for my own family this means God, we praise you, we honor you, we thank you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. We set the atmosphere of this house for the situational circumstance for which you have called and assigned us to be here. We cancel every demonic 
vice, every dart that has been launched at our minds, our thinking. We ask God that you would resituate, realign, reposition us according to truth and not the lies that the enemy has told us. We bless you, we honor you, and we give you glory because you are worthy. You are the El Shaddai, the Elohim, the Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, God of our peace. Jehovah Nisi, God, you are our banner. You are the standard by which we are able to confront everything that the enemy throws our way. We thank you for being Emmanuel, having been with us from the time that we were conceived unto this day. We thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ so that we might even experience everlasting life and walk in the confidence of victory that he exhibited on the cross. We thank you even now, God, that you've aligned us and called us here, caused us to know who we are and whose we are so that the devil is defeated and you may be exalted. We honor you and we praise you, not just for what you did yesterday, not just for what you're doing now, but even for what you're about to do in the tomorrows that are ahead of us. We want to be big enough, bold enough, bad enough, brazen enough. We want to praise you in advance for everything that you are about to do in us, with us, to us, for us, and through us. In the matchless, marvelous, and mighty name of Jesus, let everything that has breath shout hallelujah. Come on, I think you're breathing. If not, we got a different kind of problem. Let me try it one more time. Let everything that has breath shout thank you, Jesus. Come on, let everybody that's breathing shout glory. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Grab your Bibles, go to the 144th number of Psalm, the first verse. I'm going to give my media team time to get there because I was a little late getting them the scriptural text. But the 144th number of Psalm, the first verse. The 144th number of Psalm, the first verse. Ephesians 6 and 12 is one that I want to keep you in the back of your mind. Uh, it simply says that we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Let me help you out. People ain't your problem. People are not your problem. People are not your problem. I know you continue to be mad at the person, but I need you to be mad at the person behind the person. People are not your problem. You continue to have contention and disregard and you continue to show disrespect, dishonor. You continue to be disjointed with people, but people are not your problem. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against spiritual principalities, wickedness in high places, and the rulers of darkness of this world. People are not your problem. You are fighting wickedness in high places. Spiritual demonic principalities and strongholds that have been set up to derail you and to deter you from walking in God's divine truth. So you got to change your fight. If you're going to be victorious, you're going to have to alter your fight. Here's the question that I have, and it's really a sensible question. If, if, if what you have been doing has not prevailed and you continue to fight in the same way, at what point do you think to yourself, maybe I should change my tactics? Nobody continues to hit a wall and, and then continue to do the same thing in repetition. But somewhere you're going to have to create a door. So God has given me and graced me with the capacity to introduce you to this concept. Give me more of me and my monitors, please. To introduce you to this concept so that you might be victorious in the fight that you are in. And I don't even know if you realize it, but you are in a fight. You are in a fight. Oh, no, nah, I ain't fighting nobody. Yes, you are fighting. Yeah, you're fighting for your soul. You're fighting for your life. You're fighting for your sanity. Come on. The insanity that surrounds us seeks, uh, seeks to pull us into itself so that we lose our sanity and become insane. Uh, let me give you an example. If you look at the news and watch the news, just look at television. It will drive you insane. The worry and the anxiety and the stress and the sensationalism and all the things that they throw in your direction to cause panic and fear to prevail, which are vices of the enemy. Oh my God, the, the dollar has lost its value. That may be true, that may be fact, but that may be a fact, but, but the truth is, and my God still shall supply. <laughs> 
I, I, don't, I don't operate under the principles of, uh, of, of currency. I, under, I operate under the principles of kingdom. And kingdom coins never run out. They can't devalue a kingdom coin because it wasn't given from the earthly perspective, but it was given divinely. Yo, with me so far? I'm preaching already if you ain't figured it out. This means the 144th number of Psalm. The first verse says, praise the Lord. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So it may be a slight variation from what you see and what you have. Praise the Lord who is my rock. He trains my hands for war and gives my fingers skill for battle. I'm going to try it one more time. Praise the Lord, who is my rock. And he trains my hands for war and gives my fingers skill for battle. Teach us, O oh God, the, words of, the ways of your wisdom. Teach us, O oh God, the things that you desire for us to know. Unlock our minds and give us capacity beyond ourselves. Let the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit give divine revelation. And let that impartation of your spirit, God, give us grace to not just receive, but to understand and to apply and put into practice. Satan, you lose, we win. I'm already victorious. Now, God, teach me how to walk in that victory so that I might be well equipped to cause demons to tremble in your name and cause lives to be changed and souls to be saved as we embark upon uncharted water and dark territory be the light within us that we might be the light for you in the world get the glory God above and beyond all it's about you not us get the glory in Jesus' name. There are three aspects of the Bible. There is the Word of God. The Word of God is the truth of God. It's the foundation for all that we see, all that exists, and all that is. The Word of God is the most imperative thing. The Bible says that it's more necessary than even the food that you have to consume to sustain your physicality. So physiologically, you might need sustenance, but spiritually you have to have sustenance the worst thing in the world is for you to be alive and to be dead man walking in other words i have breath in my body but i'm not living the word of god is essential it is one of the aspects of the bible the worship of god the worship of god is mandated it is a priority God is so in tune and so uh, desirous uh, of the worship that is due to the honor and the glory of his person that he has instructed that if you don't do it, I'll get these rocks to do it for you. That's how powerful it is because he knows that when you worship God, you invoke the power and the presence of God and demons tremble, principalities have to bow down and the enemy just flat out has to leave you alone. He hates for a person who is a worshiper to get on a mountain of worship because you just might find out who you are, whose you are, and you just might conclude, I can make it. And the Revelations 12 and 11 says that we overcome the enemy by the power of the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So he does not want you to get into worship because if you get into worship, you become a witness of who God is. And when you witness who God is, you're going to tell somebody else. And when you tell somebody else, they will finally come to a place where they recognize who they are and the system and the cycle just continues until we have an army of believers. Worship of God, the word of God, and lastly, there are the wars of God. Uh, this means war is not some uh, colloquialism. It's not just because my brother uh, Charles came up with a great song, a catchy phrase, but this means war uh, is something that is imperative to even the word of God, the truths of God, more importantly, the messaging and the stories of God. In the Bible, the, war, the wars of God uh, are vast and they're repetitive and they are conclusive and uh, they are inevitable and they have happened and they continue to happen. And here's the reality, they will continue to happen. 
until the day of Jesus' return. Uh, in Joshua, the whole book of Joshua is about wars. Uh, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. We know that from the songs and, uh, and the Sunday school classes that we took when we were kids. Uh, David uh, has a, a plethora of wars. David warred and was such a great warrior king on behalf of God that even when it was time to build the temple, God says, no, you got too much blood on your hands. I'm going to need your, your son to build the temple. Abraham uh, went and fought kings, uh, uh, wars and wars and wars. Uh, so let me help define what a war it is. Uh, simply speaking, it, it is a struggle between two opposing forces to accomplish a particular mission or seize a particular territory. And, and wars are fought for really for, for, for two reasons, to defeat an opponent, simply because I want to see you meet your demise, or to take their land, their citizens, or their possessions. The only reason people go to war is to annihilate or to defeat their enemy and to take what they have their land, their citizens, or their possessions. Uh, in, in other words, wars are fought uh, because somebody wants what somebody else has. Here, here's the, here's the newsflash. We, family believers, those who ascribe to Christianity, those who are saved and a part of the body of Jesus Christ, we are a kingdom. We are called to be a part of, get this, the kingdom of of God. Are you with me? So because we are in the kingdom of God, kingdoms are given territory. Kingdoms have dominion over territory, over regions, over provinces, over cities, over jobs, over, over corporations, kingdoms. Note that the scripture says the kingdoms of this world have become. If you understand that, then you know that the kingdom citizens are in every area of life and community. We have kingdom citizens who are doctors, who are lawyers, who are judges, who are in government, who, who run corporations, who are CEOs and CFOs. And so when God calls us to be the kingdom of this world, we got to know that even though we're in this world, we're not of this world. Even though we operate and function in their kingdom, we are not a part of their kingdom. We are a part of the kingdom of God. Are y'all with me so far? Slap your neighbor and say, no child left behind. Keep up. We're going somewhere. Here it is real simple. Kingdoms are given territory. And Satan attacks because he wants to take your territory. But it's not my territory. Yes, it is because God gave you dominion. And when you have dominion, you have authority to make decisions on behalf of that territory. So the attacks that you have experienced have not been personal. They have been a part of a master plan of the enemy to destroy and take down kingdom territory. Ah. Okay. Satan attacked Eve, Adam and Eve, to gain control of the earth. Because he wanted that territory. Abraham attacked the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah because he was taking back his family members. David attacked the Amalekites because he wanted to get back everything they stole at Ziklag. There was a war in heaven between Lucifer and God because the enemy wanted what God had, which was the glory of God that is irreplaceable and irrefutable. There was a war in heaven between Lucifer and God and Satan was ejected as a result because he was trying to take not only his glory but he wanted his authority which would have made him have dominion over territory. The book of Revelation concludes, watch this, with a battle, a war. 
And over and over and over again throughout American history, there have been, and throughout the world, there have been wars and wars. And American Revolution, the War of 1812, the Indian Wars, Mexican Wars, Civil War, Spanish War, uh, uh, American War, Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Revolutionary War, Vietnam War, Spanish-American War, the Iraq War, the Gulf, Gulf War. There have been wars and wars and wars. And watch this, it's all because they have been trying to take each other's territory. Here's a news flash. There is a war over your soul right now. There is an enemy of your soul who says, I come to do three things. The enemy has been given uh, this, this permission to do these three things, to steal, to kill, and destroy. Note that I said he's been given permission because he cannot do it without the divine authority of God releasing him to even do it, okay? Y'all don't believe me, come closer. Come here, Job, and testify for a minute, few minutes. What did God do? Well, I was, I was, I was minding my own business. I was doing quite well. Everything was good. Everything was in place. My house was good. My children were good. My finances were good. I had an affluent uh, position in the community. I had prominence. I had position. I had everything that anybody could ask for. And then God opened up the divine restraining order and let the devil loose on my life. Why did he do such a thing? Because he said he trusted that there was enough God in me that it would be able to handle whatever the enemy put on me. But it did not change the fact that the weapon was formed. There is even a war in your own members. You fight yourself every day. I want to cuss them out, but I can't cuss them out. Why do I do the things that I hate and hate the things that I do? Come on, Paul, testify. Because there is a war going on in your members. This is my question. Where is the church in this war? The only thing that we think of when we talk about warfare is how, think about it, how the enemy attacks us. Anytime somebody talks about, oh, we need to do spiritual warfare, you automatically go into a defensive posture. And the only thing that you think about when you think about warfare is how you are being attacked by the enemy. We should be raising warriors. God did not position us to be on the defense, but he gave us the answer, the solution, and the whole story so we could take authority and be on the offense. We should be raising warriors to attack, not spend your whole life responding to the attacks of the enemy. The violent take it by force. We've got to go in, be a light in dark places. You are so comfortable and so cool and collected being in the sanctuary and in the comforts of this environment. But God called you to be a light in dark territories. And here's your problem. You get in dark places and you try to fit in to the darkness instead of being different from everything that you see oh y'all not gonna like me before I'm done when is it that you hear about the attack of the believers tell me one time anybody has had conversation with you and they say my god the believers attacked this weekend they did damage to the kingdom of darkness they destroyed strongholds they brought down the heavenly and God moved in mighty way you don't hear that you just hear oh that old devil is busy when will we hear oh my god the saints are busy neighborhoods are changing children are coming off of street corners prostitutes are giving up their profession and walking into their calling preachers are being born out of gutters and alleys and homeless people are finding their place and their purpose restoration is happening drug addicts are dropping weed at the altar addictions are being delivered God is doing when is the last time Help me, Holy Ghost. When have you heard about the attack of the believers on anything? Church has become about self-help. 
Yeah, we want to come and get a quick fix. We want self-help. Let me help you out. If you are warring right now because of the, the feelings of anxiety, the feelings of confusion, watch this, or the feelings of rejection of this message, that means I'm preaching to you. <laughs> that means you are guilty of trying to come to church just to go to church but not to get refueled so you can go back out into the highways, the hedges, the byways, the street corners, the gutters, the alleys. You are, you have been called to be a light and go be my witnesses in all the world. You shall be my witnesses. Here's the thing. God needs offensive people. You're more consumed with being politically correct than scripturally sound. Because you don't want to offend people. If I say this, they might fire me. If I do this, then I might lose my endorsement. If I stand for this, they might not invite me back to the White House. I may never go back to the White House and I'm cool with that. I went once, that was enough for me to send to my mama, I'm good. Because I got on television, and I did interviews, and I told truth. And I spoke what God said, not what they wanted me to say. I got disinvited when I was invited again. They came back and said, you owe taxes. I said, you a lie. That's just their way of saying we're disinviting you to the White House. Because we don't want the political pressure that will come as a result of a truth sayer, a truth teller that will rather that will stand in this place and tell the truth, even if it costs him his career or his or his life in the process. I'm trying to help y'all see it. We we don't attack. We 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 are we're weak Christians. We we become super soft. We want to worship and cry, but we don't want to stand and fight. Ooh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen right now. Ah, there's a place for worship. Worship is a priority. It is a mandate of God. There is a place and a, there's a posture for worship. Uh, there is a promise in worship. There is power in worship, but there is a time to war. There is a time to worship, but then there is a time to fight. You got to get off your knees every now and then and stand like the man or woman of God that you are and fight, not with weapons of this world. Our weapons are not carnal, but you got to learn how to war in heavenly places. You got to learn how to lay before God and call on him in the midnight hour. You got to learn how to pray until something happens. You got to learn how to push your way through the pain and believe God for deliverance, believe God for healing, believe God for restoration. You're going to psychotherapists and psychologists and psychiatrists, but you ain't going to the one that made you and put the brain in you and ask your emotions and put them in their proper place. What are you waiting on? Where are my fighters? I just, I think I got about 30 fighters in here. I need my fighters to make some noise. I need to sound a war cry. I need to sound a war cry in the holy temple. I need to sound a war cry. I need the devil to hear us coming down the block and know that the Christians are here. The believers are here. The born again are here. The blood washed and redeemed are here. The saved and sanctified are here. Where are my warriors in this place? We don't attack sickness anymore. We don't attack de addiction. We don't attack depression. Uh, no, no, no. We, 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 pa we pamper it, we, but we don't attack it. We, here, we don't raise warriors anymore. We raise defendants. We, we raise people who, we raise children that are so soft. Come on here, somebody. 
that are so fragile and so gentle that when something hits their lives, their first thought is to take their life instead of, no, devil, you're a liar. I see you. You should have got me before I see you. Nah, 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 nah. I'm here now, and I learned how to pray for my mama. I learned how to pray for my daddy. I learned how to pray for my papa. I learned how to pray for my grandma. I learned how to do battle with the devil at an early age. See, that's the problem with progression because sometimes in progress, we leave our power behind. But there was power in devotion. There was power in devotion when the old saints would simply do nothing for 30 minutes but call on the name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And before you knew it, deliverance was happening just at the... Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Please sit down. We... Yeah. We don't... We don't raise warriors. We, we raise wimps. Sometimes, oh my God, my phone doesn't work. What? Oh my God, the cable is out. What am I going to do? There's no internet. My life is over. Okay, come in here. We're gonna create, we're gonna create our own internet. Let me show you something. Get on your knees. Get down here with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I speak life over my child. Give her signs and wonders. Put pictures in her mind. Help her to see that her future is bright. Help her to see that this is just a, see what, that's the problem. You don't even pray with your babies. So when something happens, they don't even think that prayer is part of their solution. I'm preaching good to myself right now. This means. Okay, let me bring it home. This, this, this war is just not, it's not a kingdom war alone, but it's also a personal war. Every one of us in this place, whether you realize it or not, we are at war. The devil is working tirelessly, attacking us left and right. The problem is that you don't understand the attacks because you don't realize what you have that has so much value. Remember that I told you in the beginning and I defined it for you that the only reason that people go to war is because they want to defeat the enemy and they want to take territory, they want to take citizens or they want to take possessions. In other words, they want to take whatever is of value. The enemy is attacking you because you have something of value. He, he attacks your future because if in your future you might you might actually find yourself in God and bring glory and honor to his name and the enemy hates for you to have a future that's why God says don't worry about it I got it Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts I have for you I am both author and finisher the beginning and the end it happens and starts with me and I know the thoughts I have for you says the Lord not to harm you but to give you a hope watch this and a future but the enemy will attack you because he wants to steal your future. Your future might bring glory to God. As a matter of fact, tomorrow when you get to your mailbox, the, the, the enemy might lose and get a black eye because your prayers will be answered. The next time you go for a doctor's visit, the enemy might in your future get a black eye because the doctor's report will be different because you believe the report of the Lord over the report of the enemy. You might get to your job and the thing that you thought was going to cause you to lose your job actually pushed you into a promotion and you bring glory. Glory to God and you walk around the office telling everybody it's the Lord's doing and he's just been good to me and it's marvelous in my eyes he doesn't want you to walk into your future uh, he attacks your family because your family is your last line of defense that's why when I started preaching this series I started praying for my family like I never prayed for them before that's why I'm gonna ask you to pray for the first family because the enemy will smite the head because he knows that the sheep will scatter 
and the minute I stepped into this territory, I, remember, I, I knew immediately I've got to do battle with the demonic and I've got to cover my family and plead the blood over every nephew, every niece, every person, every cousin, and my grandmama. My, I, I had to start covering my mama, my daddy, my children in another way because your family is your last line of defense. Watch this. The greatest way to distract you is to attack your loved ones. Uh, let me tell you how, how dirty the... Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let, let me tell you how dirty this demon is. He is dirty. We on our way out to church this morning. I'm leaving the house. I usually leave before my wife. My wife is getting dressed. She's getting ready. I walk downstairs and I get ready to walk through the mud room to go outside. And I open the door and there was this horrible smell that hit me in the face. And I said, oh my God, what is that smell? Well, in our, in our mud room, I had the two dogs that live in there. Now, my dogs are housebroken. They, they don't go to the bathroom in the house. There has to be something wrong. I look at one of my dogs, I look at my Rottweiler, and, and I realize, oh my God, he's sick because he has the runs, and it has run everywhere right before I'm about to go out the door to come and preach this sermon. So my wife is in, she's getting dressed in the bathroom who hates dogs, by the way. Let me help y'all understand first lady's plight. Who just happens to allow me and my sons to have dogs, but she hates dogs. And I got to walk in the bathroom with fear and trembling with timidity in my heart tiptoeing into the territory of the woman of God that will turn this whole thing out she's quiet until y'all don't push she get close to the edge it might be something different up in here don't forget she's from North Memphis we just live in Naperville so I walk in I say honey you ain't gonna make it to church today she said what happened I said, the dog is sick. What you mean he's sick? He's sick, honey. He, 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 what do you mean he's sick? I said, go wake Trey up. The enemy is so tricky that he will even use your dog to try to take authority over your mind and cause your actions. And now watch this. I'm on the way here to preach this word. And for the first time ever since I've had the dog, he used the bathroom in the house. And it ain't just using it in the house. He got to have a bath and it's running. Oh, I'm trying to paint the picture so you smell it. You have to pray over everything connected to you at all times because the devil will use whatever and whomever he can to pull you off purpose and cause you to abort your assignment. I looked at my wife with the confidence of Christ. I said, honey, I'm so sorry. I do have to go. I got to preach this word. Wake your son up. I turned around and ran out the house before she could catch me. Watch this. He will attack your focus. You are more deadly when you're focused. If you take a light and focus it, it becomes a laser. It can penetrate a wall. Your finances, he will attack your finances. Your ability to help others is tied to your ability to make kingdom pack, impact is tied to your finances. He attacks you in financial wellness, financial wholeness, financial literacy because he does not want you to figure out kingdom principles actually work. He hits you with fear and you don't tithe. And when you don't tithe, you rob God and then you turn around and expect God to bless you and wonder why the windows are shut and everything is drying up. He will attack you in the area of your understanding that if you don't give, you cannot receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive that if you don't sow, you cannot reap. He attacks you in the area of your finances because if you are broke, you ain't good for nobody. Well, I can still serve, yeah, but you still got to eat. 
He attacks your faith, the greatest requirement in, in your artillery. The faith, uh, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, you can't even please God. So he attacks you in the areas of your future, your family, your focus, your finances, and your faith. But I want to give you a few things right quick. Why does he attack you? When does he attack you? How does he attack you? And with what does he attack you? Why does the devil attack you? Here it is. It's simple. Ain't deep, ain't heavy. Come closer. It's simple. Lean in. You have something of great value and he wants it. I told you it wasn't deep. I told you it was simple. What you have is so incredible that the enemy will fight you for it. Here it is. If, if I was the enemy, I would fight me too. With the level of anointing I carry. With the grace that is on my life. I ain't going to be boastful. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. I ain't taking credit for none of it. God did it. God gave it. It is God's and I've given it back to him. Okay, be clear about that. But I can sing. I can preach. I can play. I can teach. I can write. I can pray. I can do it. I can parent. I got power in the Holy Ghost. I understand my divine assignment. I'm walking in alignment with my purpose. I have a passion for the king and the kingdom and God. See, if I I was the enemy I would try to fight me too with innuendo with temptation with rumors with sickness with distraction with if I was the devil I would try to take me out too because every time somebody puts a mic in my hand the devil is angry and he's gonna leave with a black eye because if I'm in the white house the black house the crack house I'm gonna preach the same message Jesus saves and Jesus can. So, so, that's my resume. Why do you think he is attacking you and your family the way that he has? He has been attacking your family for the last three generations, trying to prevent you from coming into the knowledge in this dispensation of time of who you are in God. It wasn't about the broken home. It wasn't about your deadbeat daddy. It wasn't about your grandpa. It wasn't about all of the things that came before. It was about you and what you are about to birth in this season and what God is about to use you to do and to make and to create and to build and to become it's about what you're gonna teach your children and your children gonna teach their children the enemy knows that you have great value problem is you don't know you don't know if you knew who you were if you knew that you could speak those things that are not as though they were and that you could see the manifestation of God's grace and and his situation uh, in your circumstance if you knew that God would give you the capacity to lay hands on sick and they have to recover if you knew that if you surround people and blanket them with the power of prayer that God will supernaturally meet their natural circumstance and things would just turn around if you knew the proxy of the power that you have just by speaking speaking things in the name of Jesus whatsoever things you ask when you pray if you have the faith to believe that it's already done you shall have what you say anything you ask in my name if you knew who you were if my people which were called by my name would simply turn from their wicked ways seek my face then we will hear from heaven and he will heal the land your neighborhood is going to be different when you wake up and realize who you are your block your street your corner your city is going to change when the people of God realize who they are you have you have great value so, so, so he attacks because he wants what you carry. And you got treasure. You are the very essence of God's creation. He made you in his own image and he blew his own breath in you. And so, so the enemy wants to take that because he does not want you to bring glory to God. Then uh, that, that's why he attacks. But then when does he attack? Here it is, real simple. Two things, two or two areas. You got to look at Elijah and then you got to look at Jesus. 
He attacks, first of all, after the greatest victory. Your greatest moment of vulnerability is right after you win. You got to be careful because complacency kills too. What happens after you win is you feel like I've arrived. And the enemy says, now is the time. Elijah just called down fire that licked up an altar. Elijah just had the prophets of Baal put to death. Elijah just had the pronouncement of God's favor over him and saw the manifestation of God, God's power as a result of his efforts to believe God and to put a sacrifice on there and wait for God to move. Elijah had just won. Jezebel's face was flattened. Elijah just won and then he goes into the wilderness and ends up being suicidal. Hiding in a cave. Afraid. Fearful. It makes you want to ask, Elijah, you just did all of these phenomenal things. What made you run? Because after a great victory is when the enemy attacks you. The other time that he attacks you, when he attacks you, is before your greatest breakthrough. Right before Jesus was about to enter into his public ministry, he goes into the garden to prep himself. And guess who shows up to talk to him? The enemy. Right before he was about to walk in the authority of his personage. The power of his divinity. Wrapped in the flesh and moving about in the earth. To accomplish the salvific thing that he was sent to accomplish. Right before this, the enemy says, hey, if you really got jump off this cliff. He attacks him. So you got to know that when the enemy is coming, he's going to come right after a great victory or he's going to come right before a great breakthrough. Now, this is the challenge. You know when you've won. You know when you have the victory. You've, you've lived through that so you see that you're on the other side of a victory. But what you really don't get to see is the timing for your breakthrough. So the only way to discern whether or not you're close to the breakthrough is to look at the ferocious veracity, that intensity increase that happens right before you get to it. Because the closer you get to the breakthrough, the harder the enemy tries to fight you. When the little boy had a demonic spirit that was on the inside causing him to have seizures. The Bible says that when Jesus spoke that the demon had to come out of him. But right before he came out of him, he threw him to the ground and he started having a seizure violently. But it was nothing that the enemy could do. The demonic spirit had to come out because it had been commanded that it could not kill and it could not destroy this little boy's life. I'm trying to help you see yourself that the only reason the devil has thrown your finances to the ground has wrapped, ransacked your family has tried to steal your peace has robbed you of your joy is because the more violent he has become the closer you are to the breakthrough so when the enemy attacks me my first mind should be to give God an incredible praise because I'm closer Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, bless his name. Some of you are closer than you think. Some of you are right on the edge of a breakthrough. You are one hallelujah away from your breakthrough. You are one glory to God away from your increase. You are one thank you Jesus away from your promotion. You are one bless your name away from your elevation. Don't you stop praising yet. Don't you give up on your praise yet. Don't you throw in the towel just yet. If you can just shout a little longer, then weeping may endure for a night. But God comes in the slap somebody high five and say good morning come on come on push him and say good morning bless his name I'm almost out of time how do I know I'm being attacked here it is you first of all you lose spiritual desire you, you know you're being attacked when you have lost spiritual desire I just don't have, I don't even want to be around church people. 
I don't want to go to church. I don't want to be around church people. Some of you watching me right now because you couldn't pull yourself out the bed. Because you don't have a passion for the spiritual things. You ever been there? You just, you've been hit so hard. You say, don't, don't, don't tell me no good right now. I've been in a place, I don't even want you to speak scripture to me right now. Don't, don't. It's because I'm being attacked. So, so some of you are being attacked and you don't know you're being attacked. So you can't fight what you don't know you're in. So I have to equip you with what it looks like uh, when, when you lose spiritual desire. But Psalm 73 is the answer to that. Psalm 73 and 25 says, whom, I, whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. Let this be the prayer of my heart. Let this be the position and the posture of my heart. The second reason is that you experience extreme physical fatigue. In the 62nd number of Psalm, the first verse, truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Third way you know that you're being attacked is you have financial lack or a major shortage. Somebody in here should say amen. amen. Psalm 63 and 1 says, yes, God. My God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. When your prayer life is weak, and let me help you out. Prayer is not a gift. It's not a grace. It's a discipline. So you keep, you keep asking God, look, God, I want, I want to be able to pray. No, 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 no. That's a discipline. Prayer is practiced. It is decided. It is done. And it is done as a discipline. It is not a spiritual grace that you acquire. It's not just going to hit you with a spirit of prayer. You don't have to make a choice and a decision. And when the enemy attacks you and weakens you in this area, you don't even want to pray. And you feel inadequate to pray. God, I don't know how the right words to say. I don't pray like pastor. I, I, I can't do it. No, 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 no. Do not allow the enemy to weaken your prayer, your prayer life because that is an attack. You don't know you're being attacked, but you're being attacked when you feel deeply depressed, discouraged, and doubtful. Jeremiah 29, 11 is the encouragement that counters that and that God says, no, 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 no. I got you. I got your future. I came to give you and provide you with the hope you need to make it. But when you start feeling discouraged and depressed and doubtful, it's an attack. I'm trying to help you all see that these are attacks. These are not just feelings that you have. This is not casual. This is not haphazard. This is not occasional. This is not incidental. You actually are under attack. When your past sins and habits start to resurface it. I'm going to sit down for a second. I'm just trying to give you time to think about the phone call you got last week. Hey, how you been? Mm-mm. 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 Get somebody else to do it. <laughs> Habits start coming back up. Things that you ain't done since you was in college. You want to try them again. Well, you know it's legal. They got it. They put them in them gummies now. <laughs> I think I struck a nerve. Satan always attacks at the last place of your victory. If it worked for him before, he going to try it again. You think that because you, you defeated it, that it's a wrap. No, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 is the counter for that. No temptation, no temptation has ever overtaken you except what is common to mankind and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way so that you can endure it. God always gives you an out. If it's, even if it's hanging up or telling somebody so that you held accountable. The other way that you know that your attack is your health starts suffering. You can't get well. You are under attack. The spirit of infirmity has come upon you. Doctors can't even explain what's wrong with you. You don't even know what's happening. You just don't feel well. You know you're under attack when your marriage starts struggling and your home becomes chaotic. Please hear me. These are attacks. 
You've been counting it as this person is, is doing this and these people and my spouse and my kids and the co-workers and the colleagues, they're all acting a fool. No, these are attacks. You keep looking at them as physical occurrences, but they are spiritual and demonic attacks. You pull away from godly friends and relationships. That is an attack. You don't want to be around them anymore. That is attack. You don't want to go to church anymore. You don't want to worship. You don't want to lift holy hands in the sanctuary. You won't say amen. You sit with your arms folded. You come out of ritual and not relationship. That is an attack. The enemy is trying to take authority over your mind. So lastly, what does he use to attack you with? It's simple. He's not going to use airplanes. He's not going to be missiles. He's not going to send you uh, artillery. He's not coming in with uh, swords. He's not coming in with spears, javelins. He's not going to come at you with the, the tactics of Russia, the technology of the United States, the industrialists, so, uh, uh, soldiers of China. He's, he's not going to attack you uh, with biochemical warfare. He's not going to attack you. No, no. He uses one thing, and he has destroyed countries, lives, worlds, and people with this one thing. He doesn't use all of the, 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 the massive uh, uh, components at his disposal uh, through uh, the things or the means that we have created in our physicality. No, he uses one thing. And here it is real simple. Suggestion. That's it. Just suggestion. Re remember that the first war was with words. When he attacked Eve in the garden, all he used was words. And so his capacity to use words and to implement suggestion to you is exactly what he uses not to destroy you, but to cause you to destroy yourself or destroy other people. Okay. I, I saved the heaviest part for the end. So, so these suggestions started when you were born. You met the devil before you met God. You have spent more time listening to him speak than you have God speaking. He has, watch this, a familiar voice to you. The first voice you heard was not God's, it was the enemy's. You had to find God, but the enemy found you. Thankfully, God was always there. So anything that he tried before you even knew that you were under threat of danger, God gave grace and mercy. But if you think about it, you were around, you experienced, you witnessed, you went through, you were a part of divorce and lack and ignorance and abuse and addiction. And you might have been selling drugs, doing drugs, all manner of evil and lasciviousness and lifestyles that are depleted and devoid of righteousness. You experience all of these things early before you found Christ and gave him your life. So you got to know that the enemy has perpetually, continually, and from the very inception of your existence on this earth, he has been trying to kill you with one thing, suggestion. He's first going to suggest that you by yourself. Ain't nobody else dealing with what you're dealing with. Nobody else going through what you're going through. Nobody else have, the, have the, the same issues in their marriage that you got in your marriage. Nobody else has experienced that. And he uses guilt and shame to hold you hostage so you remain in bondage. But he whom the Son sets free will release you from both guilt and shame. And you will be able to testify, it was hell, but we made it. And so he, he, he will cause you to start feeling isolated. Because when you isolate, you insulate and then he can conquer you. And he will suggest things that cause you to take your own life. Second thing is that he's going to suggest something that you're missing out on. You know, let me tell you the real deal. See, the reason God didn't want you to eat this apple 
is because he know that if you eat these other trees, oh my God, it's going to open your mind. You, you know that's all it is. He just don't want you to be like him. But man, if you eat these other trees, you don't have no idea what it's going to. It's going to open your eyes and unlock this for you. And, you know, but, but you know, you stick to this tree right here. You, you go with the single one. You, you, just, you, just, you just do this one right here. And then what do you do? You start thinking from the suggestion. And you create vain imaginations. What if? Well, just, I'm, just, just a little. Just a little taste. I'm just, just sip a little corner. He's going to suggest something that you're missing out on. Last thing is he's going to suggest the obvious things that you 90% believe already. He always makes suggestions around things that you are void of in your life. And he makes suggestions based upon things that he can automatically or already know that you have articulated in your heart and let come out of your mouth. He got demonic imps around taking note of all that you express as your own weakness. That's why you got to be careful of what you witness out of your own mouth. You paint a picture because life and death is in the power of your tongue. You paint a picture and you give the enemy. The enemy is not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. He doesn't know. So you keep telling him when your confession is something that is not of God. I'm broke. No, I'm not. I'm coming out. I'm in process. God is about to. He is opening. It is coming. Are y'all with me? There's a difference between fact and truth. That's why he can get away with it. Because some of it that he suggests might be a fact. It was a fact that you weren't supposed to eat the rest of these trees. It was a fact that he only isolated you to this tree. But it wasn't the truth. Fact says that you broke. You have no money in the bank. Truth says, but God's got you. Fact is, the doctor has found some medical conditions that seem to put you in this posture, in this position. But the truth is, God is a healer. So you cannot allow facts to cloud your understanding of God's truth. The enemy has been making suggestions your entire life. You didn't even know it was him. You couldn't fight because you didn't know who you were fighting. Don't start the business. Kill yourself. You're going to die. Give up. You'll never have kids. You'll never get out of this. You're never going to get over this. You'll never be able to get around that. No one loves you. Nobody even likes you. You're going to get out of debt. You're never coming out. You're never going to be married. Never going to have kids. Your kids are worthless. They're never going to be saved. Never going to be turned around. Never going to get a job. Never going to qualify. You're never going to be made whole. You're never going to get out over, over this circumstance. You're always going to be broken, broken. You're not as good as they are. You're not as gifted as them. You don't have what they have. You, don't, you can't do what they do. You're always going to be in this circumstance. You're never going to find anybody. Nobody will ever find you. No one will ever ask you to marry them. You're never going to be happy. Never going to get the house. Never going to be able to keep her. Never going to be able to keep him. You're not, you're too small. You're, you're not big enough. You're not tall enough. You're not the right shape. You're not the right size. You're not the right height. You're not the right weight. No one's ever going to like you. No one will ever support you again. You'll never start it. You'll never have it. It will never happen for you. You're not qualified. You don't have enough. You don't know enough. You're not right. You're not enough. You don't know the right people. You don't have enough money to build it. You don't have enough money to buy it. You don't have enough people to launch it. You don't have enough strategy and wisdom to understand it. You're not strong enough. You're not 
gifted enough. You're not experienced enough. You're not wise enough. You'll always be sick. You'll never get through this cancer. You'll never come out of this circumstance. Sickle cell and diabetes will always be your plight. You'll never get off the medication. You're never going to come through this season. It's never going to happen for you. Your children are not going to make it. Your bloodline is not going to be changed and transformed. It's never happening for you. Do you see the lies that the enemy has been telling you all of your life? Your entire life, he has been attacking you with suggestion. But here's the thing, he has no authority to create. He cannot create your future. <laughs> He cannot birth anything. He cannot build anything. His whole MO is to tear down what God is trying to build. He perverts, he tears down, and ultimately he, he brings things to their demise. So you cannot allow his suggestion to cause you to paint a picture of destruction when God has given you authority and power and life and light and victory over everything that the enemy can throw your way. A prayer. Today was that I helped you understand, if nothing else, that you are under attack. And that God has called the church to stand up and say, no, 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 no. You're not going to win this. This ain't getting ready to happen to you. I've had friends to call me with emotional challenges and struggles. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Nope, you're getting too close to me now. And if I resist you, you got to go. If I serve you eviction notice, you can't stay here. The Bible told me that if I resist the devil, not only will he have to leave, he got to run. He must flee. When you flee, it's because there's a counterattack. So I ain't going to wait for you to attack me. I'm going to counterattack you so that you understand when you step in this household of faith, when you come and try to divide and conquer this family, when you try to steal, kill, and destroy from this vessel, you better know this is not going to be a one-way shooting. It's about to be a shootout. We about to come at each other and God gave me his authority. So his authority is greater than anything in heaven, earth, or in hell. He has keys and all power belongs to him so as long as God be God and I be his servant I know I am walking in divine victory as long as God is God I know I'm walking in his divine authority the enemy has been fighting you like crazy God sent me to liberate your thoughts and make sure that you understand victory already belongs to you. <laughs> He's offering you suggestions. He ain't giving you solution. The solution has already been given and his name is Jesus. In him there is no failure. In him there is eternity. In him there, there, is no, there, there is no bending, no shadow of turning. He is faithful. He is consistent. He is dependable. In God there is no failure. So Jesus has already provided you with what you need in order to walk in the victory that he's already won. The challenge is you have not even realized you were being attacked. You thought it was a bad day. No. Nah. You thought you were just in an emotional moment. You thought you were in your feelings. You thought your feelings was just hurt. You were confused. Mm -mm. No, it was the enemy who was attacking you. And so my prayer is that God will give you the strength today to stand. If there's anybody in this place right now and you know that you are under attack, I'm going to ask you to be bold. I'm not going to ask you to be weak, but I'm asking you to be a warrior. I'm going to ask you to be strong enough to overcome the temptation to be humiliated, to be ashamed, 
to feel like it's just you. You don't even understand. It's about three other people on your same road that's going through the some stuff or been through what you're going through. And so when I was going through some situations, I started talking to some of my closest friends and it was mind blowing that they said, well, you know, as a matter of fact, I went through the same thing. I said, you lie. No way. How did you get through it? How did you make it over it? Your release and your deliverance is in your ability to walk in boldness. To take authority and dominion over your own circumstances. Say, Satan, you lose, I win. So here it is. This is what I'm asking you to do. I need wounded warriors who know that they're under attack to meet me at the altar right now. Just, just those who need it right now. If you know that you are under attack and the enemy is coming against you, come on, it's a deliverance in the hand, in, in the house. It's something extraordinary, something supernatural, something special, something powerful. It's about to come through. I've been attacked in my, my heart, in my head, in my hearing, my eyes. I've been attacked. I've been attacked. I'm under attack. I'm under attack, but Satan, you lose. I'm, I'm about to win this. This is the last day. It's going to look like this. The devil is defeated and you are a liar. God is exalted. Even now, even now, even now, even now, in the name of Jesus, even now, even now, even now, things are about to turn around.